Hi, good morning. I just thought today was a really nice day to do a little bit of a garden tour and kind of talk about what a Florida fall garden kind of looks like and um, just what happened this summer. Um, this summer was not very successful for me. It's just really hard to garden in Florida during the summer and I really felt it this year. Um, it's just so hot and rainy and not very much will grow through our summer. Some things will and I'll talk about that, um, but just there's not a lot of variety or interest during the summer. So that's actually my downtime and I think I will make it my downtime every year just to give my beds a chance to rest and incorporate you know amendments and solarize them because um i'm starting to see the effects of just bacteria build up um i got some pretty bad tomato wilt and that's um a bacteria or a virus that you know lives in the soil and I, it definitely affected some of my tomatoes right now so that tells me that i have to start really thinking about the health of my soil and kind of doing and incorporating some new things and practices that help um, manage that um, or it's just going to get out of control um, and continue to grow in population and spread um, throughout all my garden beds. Um, so just different things that I'm starting to go through and I want to change for next year. It's Right now is the time to start thinking about, okay, what didn't do so well for me and what do I want to improve um, for next year? Um, all the new seed catalogs are going to be coming out very soon. Um, you know, November and December is usually when you start getting them in the mail. And it's just time to really start thinking about like, what do I want to grow this year? Um, what do I need to do to be successful? What do I want to start buying now in advance before, you know, everything is sold out? Um, but anyways, just a lot of um, good things going on. There's some very um, successful um, crops that I have growing right now and some not so successful. Um, so I'm just going to go around the garden and, you know, show you guys what's happening. All right. So first is my lovely bed of greens. Um, they are doing very well. It's um, November, the early, the first week of November, and our temperatures have finally dropped to 50s at night, 60s, high in the 70s during the day. So this is really the most perfect time to have your transplants ready to go into the garden. Um, so you should have started your seeds for um, usually leafy greens about a month ago. I like to start mine from seed, give them a month, and then um, transplant them into the garden. They should be like about this big um, a month in and then we transplant them into the garden um, and each garden hole I put um, a big nice handful of, of blood meal um, so anything that you grow to eat you know the leaves um, will require a lot of nitrogen um, because that's what facilitates a lot of leafy green growth so that's basically all that I give them is fertilizers that have nitrogen and I don't worry too much about you know the other elements um, you know and it's organic uh, and they're thriving on that so this is a hybrid I'm actually trying it's funny because when I started gardening I was very strict I was like I'm only gonna do heirlooms I want to save my seeds um, and I did do that um, and I love saving my seeds and I have um, I'm actually opened up an Etsy shop um, to be able to share you know my seeds with other people because I feel like I have some very unique and interesting varieties that um, do well here in particularly in Florida and if they can do good here in Florida they can do good anywhere in the country. You're just, your planting timing would be a little bit different. But, um, you know, I was very strict. I was like, just heirlooms. <laughs> Sorry, I had to restart. My camera fell over. It's kind of windy today. So um, I apologize if the sound quality isn't the best, but um, that's what I have. So anyways, back to um, the hybrids uh, that I decided to give them a try. Well, um, you know, a lot of hybrids have some unique variety. Um, characteristics to them um, some of them might produce more or might have you know tolerance to certain diseases or whatever which are very common here in Florida we deal with a lot of diseases um, I feel more so than other parts of the country because of how wet and humid our climate is here um, I used to live in Texas in the same zone um, I've always been zone 9b whether that be in Florida or in Texas, but there is a big difference. Texas is not subtropical. They don't get as much rain as we do here in um, Florida, even though it's the same zone. So I was able to grow certain crops in Texas um, just fine that I cannot grow the same here in Florida. Um, so just because you're in the same zone does not mean it, you know, you can grow necessarily the same things. I think zones are based on temperatures, which sure, 
we have about the same temperatures, but we do not have the same when it comes to humidity and rain, um, which is a big factor on its own. But anyways, um, so I wanted to experiment with some hybrids just because a lot of them offer disease resistance or, you know, they just might thrive a little bit better here in Florida. And um, so I kind of, you know, have a mix now. I have some heirlooms and I have some hybrids, um, which is fine. You can, you know, do both. It's fine. Um, but anyways, so this is a hybrid. This is the Optico um, Napa cabbage. I believe it's like Chinese style cabbage which I've grown to really love um, cooking with them. Um, and it's, it's flourishing. Um, I am surprised at how healthy these leaves look. I don't even have any bug damage. I do not spray for pests in my garden at all. The only thing that I use is either BT or spinosad when um, the, they're called pickle worms. They're green and they have a white stripe on their back. Um, they will attack um, my cucumbers, my melons, um, and any kind of squash or zucchini when they are like in the baby stage or the seedling stage because they really like to munch on those very soft um, baby leaves. Um, however, once if you can just protect those plants with BT or spinicide and keep those populations a little bit down um, for those worms, um, your plant will probably make it to an adult <laughs> stage and the leaves are bigger, they're thicker, they, they have um, little spines on them and the uh, pickle worms, um, army worms, whatever kind of worms you have, um, will definitely start leaving it alone. Um, not 100%, but there's definitely a big difference. Um, they don't like to eat those types of leaves so much. Um, so that means I can start spraying um, BT or spinosad a lot less. Um, my tomatoes is the only other thing, um, and corn that typically get some kind of caterpillars, worms, whatever. Um, my tomatoes have a tendency to get um, army worms. I have not seen a tomato hornworm yet. Um, I don't. I have a feeling I just don't have them in my garden at this point. Um, so that makes me very weary to go to a garden center and buy any kind of um, plants, starts, whatever, because I could be bringing into my nice environment that I've kept under control um, some pests and even diseases that. Um, I don't have yet and I don't really want to deal with that so that's another reason why I start a lot of my own seeds and I definitely encourage you to do that it's just um, you know you never know what you might be introducing from you know somewhere else but anyways um, I will spray my tomatoes if I start seeing that kind of damage um, and, and that's pretty much it I don't I don't spray for anything else really um, and I'm surprised because um, the leafy greens, lettuces, cabbages, um, they're, they're susceptible to a lot of pests, um, especially like aphids, things like that, um, and some kind of worms, caterpillars as well like to eat them, but I don't, I don't have that, I re and last year was the same, I didn't really have any damage from those kinds of insects. Um, I will tell you that I did notice over the years, um, I grow kale, like different varieties of kale, not necessarily because I like to eat kale. <laughs> Sorry if you love kale. Um, I think their leaves are pretty and there are some um, recipes and things that I will use it. Um, just, I don't use it a lot. Um, I, I need to, I probably should. But I noticed that um, my little clusters of kale that I have around my garden, because I, I like to mix things. I don't like to have rows and rows of the same crop. I definitely like to mix things and throw flowers in the middle, throw herbs in the middle. I do feel that that helps a lot with pest management. Um, the different scents of stuff um, really throw the pests off the insects um, instead of them all coming and on, on top of one crop that's been monocropped and is just a big you know bed full of this one thing that they love to eat. Um, I feel like when you throw these other things in the middle, um, it kind of throws them off and breaks things apart a little bit. So definitely try to do that. Um, that's more of like a cottage style gardening technique, so to speak. Um, instead of just rows of the same thing. So here I have rows, but they are different types of crops, um, you know, interspersed with flowers and herbs as well. But um, I did notice with the kale that um, I have them mixed like little plants around the garden just spread out normally because that's just how I garden. And I noticed the aphids um, will like attack the kale and leave everything else alone. So I actually use kale as a trap crop. It might work for you. Um, seriously, all the aphids would be on the kale plant and leave all the other plants alone. So 
I purposely now um, grow kale and throw it around my garden for that very reason, just as a trap crop. And I don't have to spray or use pesticides. And that was the whole point of me um, really getting into gardening like I am now to grow my own vegetables and um, you know have healthy organic vegetables that are not sprayed with a bunch of chemicals for my family. So, um, you know, if you will learn and you'll find things that work in your environment and in your garden um, to help you achieve that. Um, it might take some time, but don't give up. <laughs> you definitely can um, garden organic even in Florida, which is very difficult. But anyways, this is Optico. Um, it should be ready. It'll start. So right now it just has like its base leaves. Um, but then soon enough in the middle, it will start growing that like head of Napa cabbage. And I'm expecting this to be ready probably right around Christmas time. Um, I think it's a 75 day um, to maturity variety. So what that means is um, not from the day you start the seed, but from the day that you actually transplant the seedling into the garden, it will take approximately 75 days from that transplanting to harvest. So that's what um, the maturity date um, means on seed packets. It doesn't mean the date you start seeds, it's the date you put the transplants into the garden. So I'm really excited to give this one a try. Um, right next to it, so I, I pack things in probably a little bit too much. I did space each row about one foot apart. I kind of eyeballed it, it's not perfect. Um, but they are, it's pretty packed in there, but I think they'll be fine. Um, this side over here, I don't know if you can see, because this this is um, a tomato. This is the, um, not sun gold. Ah, what is this one called? Um, sun sugar. So I did grow sun golds for the first time um, last season. So that was um, spring. And yes, the flavor is awesome. They are super sweet. Um, they are famous for a reason and it shows. Um, they definitely one of my favorite, um, for sure, um, cherry style tomatoes. Um, but someone, I have seen comments around, you know, the internet that um, the uh, sun sugar, <laughs> I keep forgetting the name, um, tastes even better. So we're gonna see, I would be surprised. Um, unfortunately, I believe both of them are hybrids. I think sun gold because it's, um, been grown for so many years that maybe that seed has stabilized and it, it could be it's not an heirloom because of you know I think they consider heirlooms um, things that have been um, growing for 50 years or more um, but if you could also you know save the seed and it's and when you grow it it's true to the parents like it grows like the parents um, that can also be considered technically heirloom but um, I think the sun golds might be in that point where you could save the seed and still grow it and get the same exact plant um i don't think these um sun sugars are at that point but anyways it's it's a very tiny little plant i do have some um little babies on it um remember to always shake your tomato plants shake 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 because they will self-pollinate their own um flowers um so if you want to get an increase in tomato yields that is probably the number one thing i would tell you go around and shake all of your tomato plants I every day almost just walk through and shake them around um, but anyways so that's growing here over here is some purple um, bok choy um, I think it's called purple magic or purple lady I have both um, that I grow I really love the color of this plant the stems are green and the um, the veins underneath are green but then it has this beautiful like bronzy purple color it's just really pretty and the flavor wise it tastes just like any other bok choy um, so I have a row of that, then I have a row of the Optico cabbage, then I have a row of Wu Choi. So Wu Choi grows like a pretty rosette. Um, I've never grown this yet, so I really don't even know what it tastes like, but I'm going to assume it's just like probably bok choy or any of the Asian greens. Um, but I wanted to grow it because it, it did have like a really pretty rosette and the middle sometimes can be a different color. So um, this one is actually a golden color. So it's like a yellow color. Use it just like you would, um, you know, Napa cabbage or any of the Asian greens, I mean, soups, stir fries, whatever. Um, but it just looked really pretty and it, it is an heirloom. So I will definitely be saving seeds from that. Um, this is Chim Jimisai. Um, I think it's kind of like a hybrid. It's not, this is, I think I could save the seeds from this one. And I'm gonna say hybrid, but I don't mean it in that sense. I just mean like it's um, like a mix of tatsoi and bok choy, I think. 
Um, but anyways, it has longer leaves, um, kind of like um, bok choy, but it's ruffled kind of like the tatsui. So I haven't tried this one yet. Um, it's just another leafy green that I wanted to try out. Um, over here, I have a purple um, colored Napa cabbage called Merlot. This is a hybrid. Um, I grew this last year. Last year I grew like, like literally only like three of them because I've never really grown the, um, the Chinese style cabbages very much or had much experience with it. So I just wanted to grow a couple and just see how they do. Um, it grew, um, they were small. They were like this big maybe at maturity um, by the time I harvested them. But the color was just so pretty. It was like a vibrant violet. It, they're really gorgeous. Um, it is growing a lot slower than this hybrid Optico cabbage. Um, but I just think that's how it is. I remember last year too, it just was a very slow grower, but um, very, very beautiful. Uh, and I love growing different colors of things or weird colors, things that you don't, you're not gonna find in the grocery store, that's for sure. Um, so I do, um, I, you know, I, my goal is to have a lot of um, seeds and start collecting a lot of seeds for these things that I grow that are just not very common and share those with other people. Um, so the Merlot one, unfortunately, is a hybrid, but I, I don't know if there exists a purple colored Napa cabbage. That's um, heirloom. Um, I, that's something that I definitely will be looking for. Um, but next to it, we've got always tag your plants <laughs> every time Wu Choi golden golden green so it's Wu Choi like this other one here that I said um grows kind of like a rosette um the outside leaves are green the middle is like a golden yellow color so it just looked really pretty it looks like literally a little rose so um I'm growing that one here I should be able to save seeds from that too um then I have a row of tatsoi and then some ro rows of regular bok choy, um, the green um, bok choys. Um, I also have a row of Chinese broccoli, I think it's what it's called. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's Chinese, it's, it's got a flavor like asparagus kind of, um, and you eat the stems. Um, you choy some, I think is another name for it. Um, but I think, um, like the just common name for it is Chinese broccoli. Um, but it, to me, it tastes more like asparagus. So I have a row of that growing. Um, and then next to that, I have a bunch of lettuces. So I've never been able to successfully grow lettuces. They just always bolt. Um, I never got the timing down right. But I'm like, if I can grow these Asian greens, I definitely, you can definitely grow lettuce. It's the same, same thing. So I started seeds for lettuce. Um, I have a big mix of different kinds in there, different colors, um, and they are, they're doing great. So that's the very last row here. Um, then there's like this area back here that's um, empty. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really know what I'm gonna put in there yet. I might put in um, some purple cauliflower um, and other cauliflowers that I have growing. Um, last year I grew a purple cauliflower called um, Violetta d'Italia, and that is a heirloom. Um, massive. They were like basketball sized um, cauliflower heads. By far the best producing brassicas I've ever grown. Um, I can't even grow broccoli like as well as that, that particular cauliflower. Um, so I'm very excited to be growing that obviously again. It probably will always be part of my garden <laughs> Like I definitely have um, a YouTube video about um, that particular Variety how to grow it how to be successful getting big heads like that um, So I'm growing that again, and I think I might be putting it at the end of this bed here um, Not sure <laughs> so we will see but anyway, so that's this bed. Um, I have this um, trellis here you can see parts of the bottom of it um I had rattlesnake pole beans growing on there, um, but they are, they're done um, and it's kind of getting too cold for them. Um, I also have those seeds on my website because that, that is probably one of my favorite um, green beans, so to speak, um, that I like to grow. Um, so it's done and I'm probably now going to start seeds for, um, direct sow the seeds for um, Oregon Sugar Pod uh, 2. Um, which is a snow pea and I had grown that last year. I, last year I experimented with snow peas. I grew like four different varieties. That one blew the other ones out of the water, like 
blew it. It just was extremely productive. It produced over a longer period of time. Um, the flavor was great. Like, I don't even bother experimenting with other other types of snow peas. Just go straight for that Oregon sugar pod too. So yeah, um, so I'm gonna take you to other parts of my garden now. So these are my tomatoes. This is a whole bed dedicated to tomatoes this year or this um, fall. This is an example of the tomato wilt virus. Yep, I gotta pull this out immediately and dig out that soil before it spreads to its neighbors because that definitely can happen. Um, but there's different varieties here. Um, again, tomatoes I've never tried before. I don't know how long it's gonna take for them to ripen. Without the hot temperatures or the warm temperatures, they will take longer to ripen. This is a Japanese triplay. I'm super excited to try this one. I hope this plant does not succumb to something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I can finally try that. But literally this cold weather is gonna make these take forever to ripen up. This is Principe Bortesi, if I'm saying that right. It's like little clusters. This is known to be a very good um, little tomato for sauces and drying. I wanted to try um, drying or sun drying my own tomatoes. They're looking great, but I just need things to ripen up. This was Black Beauty. So this makes me really sad because last year or last season, um, I had tried growing it and it was not doing well. Like, I don't know. Um, it was a different bed on a different side of my house and it just wasn't happy. But this plant was doing great and it was loaded with flowers but it got um some kind of tomato will virus or bacteria and yeah it's dying it's, it's done this is paul robson this is my favorite okay let me just repeat paul robson <laughs> very productive it's unfazed by like any kind of wilting diseases or viruses or whatever that's going on with the rest of my tomatoes um, it's one of the first to start producing. This is the first tomato. Um, and the flavor is the bomb. I, I love it. It's like a brown red tomato. Um, I just, I really love this tomato. So I'm glad it made it, but we'll see how long it takes for those tomatoes down there to ripen up. And then on the other side, because this whole bat is full of tomatoes. These are tomatoes from Paros, Greece. Um, somebody gave me seeds for the famous, um, they're little tomatoes. They're smooth ones and then there's some that are fluted. They're commonly used, it's an heirloom um, in Greece to make, um, well you find it on Santorini mostly. Um, they're like tomato fritters. So this is the actual tomato that they, they use to make these tomato fritters that you typically only find in Santorini. Um, and Paros is an island right next to Santorini or within that group of islands. Um, it is starting to flower. I don't really know how it's going to do um, here in a whole nother continent, but um, it is starting to flower and I'm really excited to give that a try and you know see how they do here in our soil anyways. Um, over here, I mean, not much. This is my strawberry patch. I decided to put um, plastic mulching down this time to kind of keep the weeds down. Um, poke a hole and put your strawberry plants um, some of them, I don't know how they're doing. Some of them didn't make it, but, um, last year I had quite a few strawberries, so that was fun to grow. Um, I also use the spaces of my, the holes of my cement blocks to grow little things like more bok choy, basically. <laughs> so different colors of bok choy, more of that purple bok choy, um, use up all the space that you have. And this, um, this was my, uh, my blueberry patch, but dang it, blueberries are so difficult to grow. Like seriously, I really, really struggle. It's the acidity of my soil. It's not acidic enough. So basically they are unable to uptake nutrients, um, through the root system and they very, very slowly just die. So I have one variety here though that's really thriving. It's the scintilla. Uh, it's hard to see in here, but she's taken off. Um, but everything else is dying and if you only have one blueberry plant um i don't even know if she's going to produce because they need another blueberry plant to cross pollinate and really produce for you so i don't know what's going to happen i don't know if i want to invest more in buying more blueberry plants i'm not sure but anyways this milkweed overtook um and is growing all through here anyways um and it's it's soon to be butterfly season um this is a host plant for the monarch monarch butterflies they come down here during the winter um, and pretty soon I'll, I'll, these will be like just eaten down, mowed down to nothing 
by the Monarch Caterpillars, and I have seen a couple caterpillars in here so far, but really, um, by February, these are just like covered in caterpillars, hundreds of caterpillars, and they're all over the floor, and it's just, it's great. <laughs> I love it. But anyways, um, so this is a lot of milkweed in here. And some zinnias, because my zinnias just kind of prop up and grow everywhere now. But yeah, so this is the other side of my tomato bed. Um, this um, is a electrical conduit pipe that's stuck between some PVC T-pipes and put on top of a T-post um, with this really cheap um, vinyl mesh trellis that I get from Amazon, which this, this, this works great for growing tomatoes, actually. It keeps them, it definitely supports their weight. I don't have another one, so I just threw this other one on here and I gotta, these, uh, you know, tie these Pyro's tomatoes onto this trellis still but getting there getting through it um these are different bush beans green beans i don't know what it is bush beans bush beans don't really do very well for me and i'm starting to think that it's because they're down low to the soil and there's just a lot of soil diseases here because whenever i grow um the vining kind of green beans and such like the rattlesnake um they do great they really produce a lot i don't really see a lot of diseases so um you know, I don't know. The only bush bean that I really, really love to grow is called Harvester. Um, and I'll be growing that in spring. These are all random, different kinds, varieties. Um, none of them really did spectacular for me. This is um, Komatsuna. I've never grown this before. This is another Asian green. Again, I'm using the space of my blocks. This is Italian parsley. This is the German camel meal. I love growing camel meal. Um, I also have the Roman variety. The German one is supposed to be a, an annual, I believe, and then it dies. Um, but it produces a lot of flowers. Whereas the Roman one is a perennial, produces less flowers, but it's a perennial. So I'm, I've got some of those growing right now as seedlings um, to kind of just test out how they do. So this right here, which they're all dead now, was my experiment on um, growing the parthenogenic um, cucumbers. Um, these are cucumbers that are self-pollinating. So basically every single female flower will turn into a cucumber, which sounds great, but this did not produce as much cucumbers anyways, or flowers as the um, Jabai Shishomarasu cucumber, which is an heirloom. I believe these are hybrids. These parthenogenic um, cucumbers are all hybrids. Plus their disease resistance is not that great. I, I don't know, I wasn't happy with this. I wish I would have just grown my Jabai Shishomarasu cucumbers because um, now I missed the opportunity to be, you know, harvesting cucumbers at this time. But um, anyways, this is a variety called China Jade. This one did better than the other ones that I tested out. I also have Diva and Bait Alpha. The Bait Alpha is looking okay too, but they're little cucumbers like this big. Whereas I like the bigger Asian cucumbers. Here's one left actually from the... Um, this is the China Jade that's back behind here, but they're, they're definitely longer. The Asian cucumbers are way longer and I, I just like their texture better. They're crispier. Um, but yeah, the, the, this variety, um, did not produce as much as the Jabai Shishomarasu. That plant alone produces loads and loads of cucumbers. So I really missed out on that this year, but anyways, I definitely will be starting that again in spring. And then this is kind of empty space. I have some more tomatoes down here. I have some Everglades tomatoes. They um, they self-seed, they're almost like a weed, but it's um, actually a tomato. They're very, very small. They're like little current tomatoes. Um, it's actually natural to the state of Florida. It grows in the Everglades. Um, so this is a very highly sought out um, seed because it's something um, that will grow well um, here in Florida. And this um, self-seeded itself. That, that whole patch right there is self-seeded. Um, and it kind of grows and sprawls out. You don't have to stake it or none of that kind of thing. It just grows and sprawls out on its own. Um, it gets really bushy, it blocks out weeds. So if you're looking for something that's edible, that will help you control weeds a little bit or just use as a cover crop or something like that, um, the uh, Everglades tomato is a choice. And the flavor is great. It, it kind of has a lot of umami-ness to it for being such a little tiny tomato, um, but it's great. And I will have seeds for that um, available on my website at some point too. This is cilantro. Um, a lot of people believe cilantro is like a summer crop because you eat it with um, things that are summery, like tacos and guacamole and stuff like that. Um, 
but it's not. Um, it actually likes cooler temperatures. It will not grow here during the summer. Um, so anyways, this is a variety called Calypso. I have grown this one um, before, it's, it's great. Um, the leaves are very pungent. Um, if you've never grown your own cilantro before, I highly recommend it. The leaves, when you grow your own, it's just much more pungent and concentrated than, you know, buying it in the grocery store. And this is more of that um, German chamomile. See, here's another Everglades tomato that just popped up. So, yeah, she's doing great. This is a um, bush bean, I'm mean, not bush bean, a vining green bean variety. Um, it did okay. Um, I don't know. It did okay. They're all right. But I still like my um, rattlesnake pole beans more. This is the last bit of my um, yard long beans. This is my favorite variety. It's a light green colored one, but the um, they get thicker than this. So I like them for the thickness. Um, and I'm, I, I have seeds for this on my website as well. This is my favorite yard long bean. If you haven't given a, a light green one a try, and they're thick like this. Whereas the other varieties to me, um, they're like pencil, they're very, very thin. Um, but this one is just more meatier and it's long and healthy. It's a nice plant. This is um, a Roma tomato. I have two plants, one right here. The, one, the other one is back there. Um, it is starting to produce some. I really wanted to try to grow um, enough tomatoes to do like my own sauce, but um, I had a lot of these Roma plants, but only two of them survived. So I don't know if that's gonna be enough to make anything significant. And then over here are my um, bell peppers, or my sweet peppers. Um, these are perennial. Um, they don't like the cold, so they're gonna like stop growing basically. I'm gonna just prune them, cut them all down, um, keep them warm, cover them up on the coldest nights, and they will bounce back and start growing again um, in spring. But this is the um, this is the red Marconi. It's an Italian frying pepper. It's sweet, um, and I have like a little regular red bell pepper. I don't know what variety, but it, it's right next to it. Back there, I have the gold or yellow color of the um, golden Marconi um, Italian frying peppers. I have a seed mix for both of these varieties on my website as well. They do, they, they produce a lot. Um, I'm very happy with, with how much they produce and the flavor when they are raw. It's very sweet um, and crunchy. So um, I'm happy to have these as a perennial plant in my garden um, and they will bounce back every year. Um, this space had the a hybrid um, zucchini, which by far the best um, zucchini I have ever grown. Um, it's Alexandria hybrid. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to save seeds for it, but um, this just, it has produced so much. It has a very, very good disease resistance to powdery mildew, which usually destroys and takes down all my zucchini plants at some point. Um, this held up for a very, very long time. I This, this plant here was started and grown over the summer. So um, for me to say that a zucchini plant actually grew during the summer here in Florida says a lot because that's like impossible. <laughs> this variety is awesome. I will always grow this. It's a hybrid, unfortunately, but um, it's awesome. Uh, but it's finally done. It's coming to its end. It doesn't really like the colder temperatures of the 50s. I could see it just kind of like wilty looking because yeah, last night it was lower 50s or something and it's it's gonna, you know, it's done. I have another one down here. Um, same thing. It is probably done. Um, so I'm probably going to just... I'm not sure what I'm going to grow in here again. Maybe maybe those um, brassicas or the cauliflower or something. Um, here's a lot of marigold. Um, I'm just letting it go because... Well, I don't really have plants for this space yet. So it can just grow and occupy it. But yeah, that's the um, full garden. This is my side garden, my main garden. Um, the rest of my property, um, I have a lot of fruit trees and things like that. I'll show those real quick. But this is really um, my main part of my garden where I grow like all my vegetables. So I wanted to show you guys a variety of um, tomato that I think is doing really, really great. This is the Sweetheart Cherry Tomato. Um, Baker Creek had posted on their Instagram one day a while a while ago that this just it was loaded with tomatoes it's a very very high producer um they're kind of the bigger on the bigger side cherry tomatoes and the, the, literally this is loaded in flowers like crazy 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 amounts of flowers again go in there and shake all your plants um it's finally starting to produce some um 
some little clusters here and they are in the shape of like a little heart so um i'm very curious to see what they taste like and she's doing real good so i just have a tea post here um and then i just use twine or whatever whatever string you have and just every now and then kind of push it together and um tie it to a tea post and that's it i don't, I don't need a big um trellis or anything like that you can a lot of people actually grow even the big size tomatoes on the tea post system like this you just tie it on there um but anyways i'm real happy about this one so yeah this is my side garden now we start with um like my tropical fruit trees these are a bunch of different banana varieties um some of them have clusters of bananas which you can see that one up there um hopefully i mean they literally take months to green and mature um, hopefully they do that quickly because once that cold weather comes through, it literally, um, stops the growth of these, uh, bananas and it could freeze the plants and I could lose a, that whole bunch up there. That has to be at least 30, um, little bananas. Um, and that's the ice cream or blue java varieties. Apparently that's what it is. Um, then I have some other varieties. Um, this one right here is a Namwa. That is a huge cluster. So this is supposed to be something um, similar to the uh, bananas you would buy in the grocery store, except this is a dwarf um, variety. This is the dwarf Namwa. Um, I haven't tried this one before, but that is by far the biggest cluster of bananas I've ever, I've ever gotten before. So then here, that's in the cha-cha back there. Um, it's a relative of the mangosteen family. Um, I cannot grow mangosteen here. Uh, mangosteen here, it, that is definitely a super tropical. Like you have to have a greenhouse for that, even in Florida. But um, this is a relative. It's the achacha, and it does um, take the cooler, a little bit cooler temperatures, better. Um, so that's why I have that growing here. Um, and these are just some of my other ones. This is a new um, plant for me. This is a Brewster lychee um, tree. Um, she's probably gonna take three years or so to finally start producing. Um, they take a while, but um, I love lychees. This is a dwarf um, moringa. Um, I do like to use moringa leaves, make tea with it. They're very nutrient dense. Um, so I have some of the dwarf trees started that I started from seed actually last year. They grow very fast. Um, so happy to, to get this to growing to a bigger size so I can start harvesting these leaves. This is an elderberry. Um, I got it mostly for the birds, really. Um, I try to have um, berries and a food source for the birds. They eat worms and caterpillars and stuff in your garden, so it's good to have them. Um, so, and, and you know, a lot of people use it to make medicinal things. I don't really know too much about that, so I'm gonna have to research it. But um, apparently people make like an elderberry syrup that's really healthy for you and helps your immune system. Um, so that might be something I will try. I don't know when this flowers. This plant is huge though. And it grows really really fast um but i don't know when it when it starts flowering or when i can expect that this is a florida super haas avocado um i've only i i have never been able to harvest anything from it um it it was small it was a small plant but this year it literally it, it like tripled in size all of this is new growth this year so i'm very hopeful that um next year it'll start flowering in february um, and whatever, you know, pollinates from that will produce an avocado for me about this time of the year, November, fall time. Um, so those flowers from, from flowering to harvestable avocado is months and months and months and months. It, it is a long time, but I hope it's worth it. I hope the flavor of this is similar to something that would, um, you know, the Haas avocado. That's my favorite. So, um, something that's good for making guacamole. This is another Moringa. Um, same thing, the dwarf variety. This is, all this greenery here is longevity spinach. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really like the flavor of longevity spinach, um, but it is completely edible. You can eat this. But mostly I use it for a ground cover in between all of my um, tropical fruit trees and stuff like that. Because it spreads, it, and it grows, it's massive and it spreads. You might not like that, I don't know. But I do because the, the plant itself is like these thick vines. They don't root. Um, so if you wanted to remove this stuff and maybe plant something else, this is easy to take out. You just yank these long vines and you pull the plant out. Like it's not that hard. So I've left it and I use it more or less like, um, some kind of a green ground cover. This is another, um, avocado variety. 
This is the uh, Brogdon. People love the flavor of this. Um, they don't even want to share it with you. Um, I had one. Um, I actually harvested one. Um, I don't remember when. I don't know if it was like in August or July or something. Um, it, it did produce one little avocado for me, which is surprising that this smaller plant here would produce at least one avocado for me when this big one did not. But anyways, um, so we'll see. We'll see how it does this year and if I get any more off from it. And then um, I also try to incorporate a lot of plants for the butterflies and pollinators as well in between all of my fruit trees. This is porterweed. This is the pink variety. Um, it will grow into a big bush and the butterflies really love um, these flowers. Um, this is lemongrass, the bushy. You can almost use this as a ground cover too, except it gets really, really tall, but it's very bushy, it grows fast, um, and it definitely blocks out some weeds. Down here, this is um, a Nam Doc My um, Mango. This black on here is black sooty mold. She is, or used to be very infested with scale. You can still see, um, see those little round things. That is scale, that's an insect. Um, it sucks the juices out of um, your plants and it spreads to your um, other fruit trees. So this is something that you will definitely wanna take care of. Um, and I, I, I definitely neglected this poor plant. But anyways, um, this scale um, secretes some kind of um, sticky substance that this sooty mold grows on. So if you start seeing sooty mold on your plants, it's infected or infested with some kind of pest. Um, it's not like a disease, so to speak. It's a result of pest, um, you know, infecting your plant. So yes, this, they're dead. I believe they're dead now. Um, I, you know, I've been spraying this actually with a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and water to disinfect. And this black sooty mold has been peeling off on its own, which tells me that it's working. Like it's, it's killing their eggs or, or whatever and stopping and disrupting the life cycle of the scale. Scale is, is kind of a difficult thing to get rid of. Um, so when I see this, um, I neglected this plant, but it's not good. Um, this, this can definitely be a big problem in your garden if you don't take care of it and it sp starts spreading to another plant. So I noticed it was spreading to have this other, um, this is a smaller little mango that I actually started this from seed. It, it is one of the um, Asian varieties. It's kind of hard to see underneath this lemongrass. So these are tropical like jungle plants forest you know rainforest plants um so they like a little bit of shade so she's happy under here getting some shade from um you know the lemongrass and stuff but it was now starting to get some sooty mold so whatever this plant was being infected with infested with was now crossing over so that's when i noticed it and i was like all right i gotta do something about this um so yeah every couple days or so three four days i will spray this with hydrogen peroxide one cup of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water which is that's a pretty high um concentration but um it's working um and it's organic and i'm not spraying it with something crazy um and this is starting to come off um and it's just working so i just got to keep up with that spraying cycle and hopefully you know in a couple months it'll be completely cleared of this so next we've got I mean, I have flowers too, because I love flowers. This is a rose, it's a pink rose. This is a Meyer lemon. I'm very excited about this. Um, this is the very first time that this tree has produced anything for me. Um, citrus, anyways. This is the first time I'm getting any kind of citrus. And she's loaded. She's got at least 10 um, little lemons. They should be ready any day now, because they um, start flowering in like February and they get to the harvestable stage around November right now. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know at what point I can harvest these. Um, they don't look like bright, bright yellow yet. Um, so I don't know, maybe, I, and, and they don't pull very easily off the tree there. Um, so I'm gonna give it some more, a couple more weeks. Here's some more lemongrass. Um, this is a um, plum, Scarlet Beauty plum. This plant actually is not doing um, too great. Um, I think she keeps drying out, so I really need to take a little bit better care on watering. Um, this is a jackfruit tree. I didn't even notice this, but it fell over last night, I guess, because it used to be up straight, and now it's falling over. But this is a jackfruit tree. Um, I have to manage the size of this plant once it starts maturing. 
this is a pomelo um, citrus tree. I love pomelos. Um, I don't really know what this is. I'm not going to freak out and say it's citrus greeny because I don't think it is. Um, it's probably some kind of nutrient deficiency for sure. So I really got to um, fertilize this with some, um, some citrus fertilizer. This is a key lime. So this have some limes. This is ready. They, they're small though. I want to get a regular size lime plant at some point. But anyways, um, she's producing for me as well. This is a carry mango tree. This is an excellent, excellent variety tree for the small backyard um, home gardener. It's a dwarf tree. Um, she's not going to get very much bigger than 12 feet tall if you let it. But this, this is probably the size I will keep it at. It's about eight foot, maybe. Um, and I did try for the first time this variety um, this year, back in, I want to say it was June or July. Um, she produced three um, mangoes for me. They were excellent quality. They were awesome. Um, fiberless, just really sweet. Um, really, really nice variety here. Um, I'm glad I have this one in my garden. And these are just some more pollinator plants. This is a Florida Prince peach tree. Um, this is Tithonia. The butterflies really love Tithonia, but this plant is now dying, but she has hundreds and hundreds of seeds, which I will also be selling on my website or my Etsy shop. This is the Florida Prince variety of peach. This produced two peaches for me this year. Mind you, all of these trees are, are new. Um, they were planted in here in 2019. So this is their first year here. So for this to produce three of them for me, I, I was or two of them, I was surprised. So hopefully this um, May is when it produces. Um, I'll get a whole bunch more. This is a really cool um, plant for butterflies. It's, I believe it's called cat whiskers. I lost the name or the tag of it, but it's really pretty. It's an awesome looking plant. And yeah, so that's it. This is the African blue basil. I have this all over my garden. This is the bee's favorite um, plant by far. This is a honeybell tangelo citrus tree. Um, it's kind of hard to see because I have all this Cuban oregano, which also makes a great ground cover, by the way. Um, it spreads and it's also um, these long vines that if you want to get rid of the plant, just yank it out. But I need to clean this up and give this poor honeybell tangelo tree some space. Um, but it's, it's not upright because it's so loaded with heavy fruit that it's now bent over. Um, so I can't really touch it right now. But I did notice one of them is really turning orange and it might even be ready for me to harvest. Um, they could feel softer than this. I'm going to leave it a little bit longer. But this will be the very first time I've ever harvested actual like citrus um, in my garden. Um, citrus is pretty hard to grow in my opinion. It's very finicky. You, you got to have some experience and really learn some things with it. Oh! this one came off look awesome all right so I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna try this one um this um honeybell tangelo the citrus are um usually ready for harvest in november so this this is right this is the correct time um so these should be ready um these are the most juiciest um like tangerine kind of if you're looking for something like a tangerine or a mandarin um, where you get those segments. Um, I went to a uh, citrus farm last year, or not citrus farm, but nursery, right? They specialize in citrus um, in January. And that's when all these their plants were basically loaded with um, citrus. And I got to just try them, walk around and try um, all the different varieties and decide like what I wanted to grow in my garden. So when I tried this, I loved it. Um, it this is, the honey bells are very juicy like dripping juicy when you open this up it's a mess that's how juicy they are it just pours out everywhere but yeah i i really like this way better than satsumas or tangerines or anything like that so we'll be giving this a try and then this is a page orange this um is a very very special plant <laughs> to me by far the best orange juice i've ever had in my life was made with page oranges um i believe they are a cross between oranges and tangerines or, or something like that but they definitely um have the the you know shape and everything uh structure of an orange not not the tangerine where you can pull apart the different segments like 
more like this honey bell here. Um, I thought this was going to be ready in January because that's what I was told. Um, but they are turning um, orange. Some of them might be ready way sooner than that. Um, so it's good to have different varieties of the same plant, so to speak, different varieties of oranges, different varieties of peaches, because they all um, produce harvestable fruit at different times of the year. So you can kind of like extend your season. Um, so that's kind of what the thought process was behind this. Oh, I'll harvest these in November and then these will be ready like in January or something. Um, but they appear to be ready now. So I don't know, but that's fine with me. Um, citrus is probably one of the hardest things um, that I've ever grown. They're just really finicky. They're always looking like they need some kind of nutrient. Um, and of course we have the citrus greening disease here in Florida, which is a big, big problem. Um, the only thing that I've seen to really combat that is to consistently fertilize your citrus. These are evergreens, um, so you can fertilize them. Um, normally I stop fertilizing them in September so that they can just have a break between, you know, fall, um, and winter. And then they'll start pushing out new growth and all that again in, um, spring. But anyways, um, you know, foliar sprays, nutritional foliar sprays are really important. Um, and just having a very good regimen when it comes to the nutrition of this plant. So that way it's healthy, has a healthy immune system and can combat, um, greening and won't, it won't um, cure greening, but it will um, at least delay, you know, greening eventually gets so bad on a plant that it, it won't even produce anymore, basically. Um, so you can delay a lot of that um, and keep your citrus healthier for many more years if you just, you know, keep on top of the fertilization process. So yeah, I hoped you liked my garden tour for the month of November. Um, let's try this honey bell tangelo and I could show you what it looks like and how juicy it is. Hopefully it's a good one. Be very disappointed if they're not. It's been kind of dry. Um, but we, we literally got a bunch of rain. But if it's too dry, um, you know, your citrus won't plump up and be nice and juicy. They'll be like dried out. So I was kind of concerned about that. But the last um, two weeks, we actually got a lot of rain, which is I feel is a little bit unusual. Um, usually the rains really stop um, by the end of September. Um, and then we kind of go into a dry season actually until around, maybe until April, um, which I prefer because I can control when I'm watering my plants now instead of um, the opposite, which is too much rain and rain every single day um, to where, you know, it either kills my plants or there's just diseases everywhere, which is summertime here in Florida. Um, so yeah, I like this time of the year for that. It's juicy. I'm so happy. Um, this is the first time I've ever harvested an actual citrus. I've been gardening with a citrus tree that I've had um, for probably four years. Um, not not this, this particular honey bell. I just bought it last year, actually. Um, and it was planted into my garden in January. Um, I had other citrus trees before that. They did not do good. They just looked horrible. Um, I yanked them out. They were just awful. Um, I don't really know what it is. Um, the only thing I, I think is the first set of citrus trees that I had, I bought from Home Depot. You know, they're just regular citrus trees. Um, but this particular variety, I went to an actual like Florida native, um, nursery that specializes and has very high quality plants um I, I was actually told about this nursery from another nursery in tampa they were like oh you you're by pokey's nursery in apopka they that's where we buy all our stuff because their um quality of plants is one of the best i guess they're known for this so i went to pokey's <laughs> and i bought um the honey bell tangelo from them and the page orange from them and they're I, I, I mean, obviously the quality is a lot better because I'm here harvesting my very first fruit from these trees that I planted in January. So they haven't even been in my garden for a year. Um, I believe when I bought them, they were three gallon size or maybe five gallon size. Um, they're about 60 to 80 bucks a piece, um, but definitely worth it. Um, for once, I'm actually getting some harvest. This is what I'm talking about. It's dripping everywhere this is a very messy um you know citrus but it, it's definitely 
it's worth it. Oh yeah. This is great. This makes me very happy today. So I hope you guys enjoyed my garden tour. I um I do have some YouTube videos I plan on making more of those. Um they're more detailed in depth um content about specifically about the seeds and things that I grow in my garden. So if you want more information on those varieties, that will be um posted there. Um I definitely post more than anything on Instagram just because it's easier. And I've started um posting on TikTok a little bit. Um, so definitely if you want more information, um, my goal is to start rolling out um, more in detail, I guess, guides, so to speak, on these particular varieties and seeds that I'm growing. Just so you, you know, for example, if you wanted to buy the seed from my store, you have the exact guides and information specific to that, that seed and how to grow it and everything. So that's kind of my goal. That's what I like watching myself when I'm on YouTube and stuff. Um, you know i search those varieties and see who grows them and what what do they have to say about them so that's how you look, just learn a lot and it's always great to see you know oh this is how i was successful growing this variety um of seed and being able to purchase that same exact one and you'll know exactly you know how to grow it and how it works anyways have a great day